Okay, so it's finally sinking in that the college essay is meant to reveal something to admissions that cannot be gleaned from the rest of your application. As you rack your brain for various intangible measures of your character, passion, and motivation, the question suddenly dawns on you. What if I'm boring? Really, though, everybody is boring. Everyone is also absolutely fascinating. It's all about perspective and your ability to isolate and highlight the small details that will hook the reader and make you stand out. In the end, everyone has a story to tell. Your second cousin has a story to tell. Did you know she keeps a diary documenting the 100-plus slices of pizza she's sampled thus far? And that guy who sells you gum at the local candy store has a story. He makes short documentaries in his spare time. Even Kim K has a story to tell. In fact, maybe she should stop telling her story. Is it possible to limit her to 650 words? Speaking of which, what if, instead of feeling like you have nothing to say, you're like, oh my god, I have too many stories to tell? Well, you lucky duck, we will get to strategies for narrowing down your list of awesome ideas towards the end of this chapter. All of that said, pulling essay topics out of thin air is not everyone's favorite pastime, especially when those ideas must be rooted in self-examination. The trick is to transform the brainstorming process from an existential crisis into a playground for self-discovery and self-expression. This is what this chapter will help you accomplish. Some of the questions we will ask and then answer, include, what is the backwards brainstorm? How do I even start this process? Are there things I absolutely should or shouldn't do while brainstorming? How do I know when I found the winning topic? Right now, we're going to come back to that super fun strategy in which we actively decide to forget about those Common App essay prompts. The backwards brainstorm consists of four simple steps. Step one. Read through the prompts. Once you've dissected your options one by one, you know what you're up against. Step two, put the prompts away. You now know that, at least for the time being, the specifics of the prompts don't really matter. What matters is the story you want to tell. So leave those prompts in the dust or lock them away like any obligation you once felt to clean your room. Not thinking about you anymore, prompt number two. Step three, brainstorm without considering the prompts at all and isolate your best stories. It's time to start collecting your first ideas, good or bad, silly or serious, dinosaur-related or, sadly, not dinosaur-related. A good topic will capture something about how you see the world, emphasize your human qualities, make you memorable in the mind of the admissions officer, and entertain. Step four. Fit the tales you want to tell to the prompts. This step will come pretty naturally if you choose an effective topic, and much of the fine-tuning will occur after your free writing, outlining, and even most of your story sculpting. For now, simply worry about choosing a topic that reflects how you think, how you interact with the people and world around you, why something is important to you, and why you do the things you do. There are infinite ways to kickstart the brainstorming process, but let's begin with a few of our favorite strategies. List the things you love. Start making lists of anything and everything. Think about the things you love and the things you hate. Write them all down. Record your everyday ruminations as you go about your daily activities. You never know what thoughts they could inspire in the future, so write everything down. What do you like to do in your spare time? Where is the place, big or small, that you feel most at home? Try to list for yourself the things that make you tick, the things you would choose to engage in every day if you had no other obligations. Once you've made a solid list comprising things that have come up off the top of your head, it's time for the full body brainstorm. Step away from the keyboard. Get up. Go outside. Engage in your normal daily activities. Notice things. Write things down. Open your receptors. Take a walk while you think. Eat an ice cream cone. Do something you really enjoy doing. Engaging in an activity you enjoy versus sitting at the kitchen table in frustration helps alleviate some of the pressure that comes along with starting the process and gets the creative juices flowing. Go hunting for milestones. 
Go through old photo albums or your Instagram feed and brainstorm using pictures as your triggers. Look around your bedroom. What items jump out to you as things that have meaning? Do this exercise in any place you spend a lot of time. The locker room. The school bus. The library. Your best friend's house. Your favorite ice cream shop. Try and jog your memory for the most meaningful events in your life thus far. Think about birthdays and anniversaries, special visits from long-lost friends, competitions you won or lost. Up to this point in your life, what have been your most cherished memories and why? You might not end up writing about your seventh grade science fair, but you could unearth a smaller, more significant story to tell. Also, don't be afraid to consult mom and dad. Even if you're wary of letting your parents in on the brainstorming process, they often remember details you don't or bring up stories you have totally forgotten. While you are generating your giant rolling list of ideas, there are some things you want to focus on as you sift through your idea soup. Be a narcissist. This is one of those times where we are going to encourage you to talk about yourself and only yourself. No matter what, the essay needs to be about you. Even if you love dinosaurs, the essay can't be about the extinction of the T-Rex. It needs to be about your love of dinosaurs and how that has impacted your life choices, passions, and future goals. And this essay shouldn't be about your grandma Millicent, though we hear she's a lovely woman, but rather about what your relationship with her taught you about yourself. Dig to the details. It is often the small details that make for the best essays. The most effective essays frequently tell tiny stories that illustrate a larger personality trait or passion. Look to the small moments and be specific. An essay about your general passion for music is much less effective than the story of how you washed 300 cars in 20 days in order to save money to see your favorite artist. Find the compelling stories within your stories. Get it all down with no judgment allowed. In order for it to be truly effective, the brainstorming process has to be devoid of self-criticism and judgment. You never know which preliminary ideas will lead you to your magical essay topic. So as you begin to generate thoughts, take notes on everything. Write down the awesome things you overhear people saying. Take down keywords and half-formed phrases that feel like they might lead to something, anything. You're not allowed to cross an idea off the list until you've squeezed your brain dry of inspiration over the course of at least three separate brainstorming sessions. Give yourself some time to cultivate and build upon your initial thoughts. The subjects that pop into your brain first float to the surface for a reason, even if just to lead you one step closer to your final brilliant idea. The light bulb could go on when you least expect it. Once you put on your observer hat, you're much more likely to notice these things. Okay, so you have your pen and paper in hand and you're ready to dig into this brainstorming process. JK, you're at your computer checking Facebook, but close enough. Are there certain common brainstorming pitfalls you should watch out for as you bravely plunge forward into the dark abyss of endless ideas? You bet there are. Here are a few of the most prevalent. Not putting in enough brainstorming time. We are going to say this to you now and we will say it to you 500 times before the end of this series. Start early. Time is the most valuable weapon you can wield in your quest for the perfect college essay. Devote yourself to the process for a chunk of real, substantial time each day. Ignoring your instincts. You know when something feels right and when something feels too risky, overdone, or just plain boring. Trust your gut. Trashing ideas before you fully explore them. This is another thing you will hear from us all the time. Keep everything. Record all of your ideas. Do not throw anything away until you know you won't use it, which for us is defined by the click of a submission button. And even then... Trying too hard to come up with ideas that are quirky versus authentic. Some people brainstorm for college essay topics and, through a very organic process, decide they want to compare themselves to a toaster oven in their college essays. Others are inspired to write more of a straight A to B story. We will talk more about story structure in Chapter 5, but the most important thing to keep in mind during topic generation is that it doesn't pay to be weird for weird's sake. If you are totes norm, let that totes norm flag fly. You're still awesome, and not everyone naturally expresses him or herself on the page in grand metaphors. 
explore what comes naturally. The results will feel more authentically you. Ruling out tried-and-true topics that could be powerful if handled with sincerity and creativity. Not everyone has racked up a list of extraordinary stories and accomplishments at age 17. But every 17-year-old can tell his or her average and inspiring life stories in new and inventive ways. Admissions officers aren't expecting you to have traveled around the world, invented the cure for a rare disease, or won the title of national hot dog eating champion. Most applicants share a similar set of life experiences, so it's not surprising that some tried-and-true topics push their way to the surface over and over again. Just because a subject is common doesn't mean it's a topic to be avoided. It's how you treat the subject matter that makes all the difference. This is why we don't believe there are any subjects that are off-limits. How did this subject affect your life? What did you learn from your experiences? How has this part of your personal journey made you a better person? And most importantly, can you put your own definitive twist on it? Not finding a good balance between helpful parental input and parental takeover. You can let mom and dad help, but remember that at the end of the day, this is your college essay. Same goes for friends, siblings, frenemies, and cats. By all means, do not let your cat choose your college essay topic for you. Unless your cat is Grayson, he seems to have this process down. And now we've come to the all-important question. How do you know when you found the winning topic? A few clues. You no longer want to hurl large objects across the room. You can breathe again. You're excited to start writing. No, seriously, we're not even kidding. When you find the right topic, you'll know it. All of a sudden, the pressure of writing a perfectly compelling college essay lifts a little. Not completely, that would be a miracle. Students who write effective college essays aren't thinking about what admissions officers want to hear. They're thinking about how to best express themselves and what a near stranger might want to know to feel better acquainted with them. When a topic feels like it could accomplish that task, you're golden. Finally, we arrive back at those pesky prompts that we actually love. When you've isolated a subject you think will represent you well, we suggest you do a quick test. Does a quick summary of your topic answer one of the prompts? If it's a good enough topic, it always does. Once you have chosen a topic, lock it in by performing these last few tests to make sure it will do the trick. Ask yourself, will this topic make admissions wish they could meet me in person? Does it inspire them to want to know more about me? Will anyone else be able to write about this topic in the way I plan to write about it? When the essay is complete, would it be crazy to think of someone else claiming my essay as their own? What will writing about this subject say about me? What ultimate message am I hoping to convey? The answers to those questions will help determine if you need to dive back into the idea pool or press on to turn your awesome topic into a truly incredible essay. Now high-five this cat drinking a Shirley Temple on a tropical island. You are now a brainstorming expert. It's time to take a look at Grayson's second essay attempt in which he faces his fears. What does this essay say about Grayson's spirit, determination, and ability to accomplish his goals? What else might he be communicating to admissions? Meet Grayson as the Improv Rookie. Put your paws together for feral laughter. As my troop snuck on stage through the curtain, I could feel my whiskers twitch with excitement. Our team member Mittens pranced forward and asked the furry crowd, Can I get suggestions for a hobby? Ignoring humans, someone shouted. Okay, ignoring humans, said Mittens. Here we go. I stepped forward with Jonesy, a large tabby on our team. As an ex-shelter cat, I had watched my neighbors give high-pitched old ladies and sticky-handed children the cold shoulder, and I knew I could mimic that aloof disposition. Still, I had to be quick on my paws. Jonesy approached me with a, Here, kitty, kitty. Just before his paw could muss my coat, I bristled, launched over his hand with the ease of a show pony, and casually knocked over his imaginary can of Diet Coke. I added a subtle eye roll to my soft landing, and the room exploded in laughter. I grinned. I was on stage, unafraid, and ready for anything life could throw at me. I found myself at the Calico Club, laying my pride on the line for a laugh after my first debate tournament, during which I encountered a potent case of unanticipated stage fright. For all public performances prior, I had ample time to prepare. 
I delivered a class presentation on the science behind catnip with polished expertise and reenacted scenes from the feline revolution with spirit. I even gave a musical toast at my best friend's bark mitzvah. But the thought of padding into a room, unprepared, not knowing what would be hurled my way, had me shaking in my furry boots. Knowing that to pursue my dream of becoming the next Ruth Meowder Ginsburg, I would have to conquer my fear of impromptu speaking, I did what any industrious cat would do. I joined an improv class. On the first day, I was introduced to a wildly diverse crew of cats for whom improv served a wide array of purposes. Andrea was a mother of three with a passion for self-improvement. Mittens was a cat advertising executive looking for a place to blow off steam. And then there was me, a scrawny American short hair with a bouncy ball obsession, a severe peanut allergy, and a hyperactive aversion to impromptu public speaking. Together we learned the basics of improv and how to embrace the moment. We learned to accept and adapt to each other's suggestions while also adding our own ideas to the communal comedy fishbowl. Perhaps most importantly, we learned that jokes often bomb and experiments often fail. At first, I was petrified I would embarrass myself in front of a room full of strange short hairs. But failing is what improv is all about. Falling on your nose, picking yourself up, and starting all over again. Sometimes you try to do a Michael Jackson impression, and it comes out with an inexplicable southern accent. Every once in a while, you meow when you meant to mew. Maybe you think lasers are hilarious, but the audience just doesn't. I saw so many experiments falter on the Calico stage, at some point I became immune to the duds, even savoring the giggles that followed awkward dead air. I'm feline, and I make mistakes. Accepting imperfection quiets fears and makes the performances that soar feel all the more well-earned. Through improv, I learned to adapt to uncomfortable scenarios and bounce back from public missteps. I carried these lessons back with me onto the debate floor. I would not always have the winning rebuttal, but I could always approach the problem from a different angle and make a new choice. Even if I lost, I could kick an imaginary can of Diet Coke, laugh at myself, and try again. I've learned to make the most of the unexpected because, after all, life is very much unscripted.